Wisdom. Prudentia. Justice. Justicia. Temperance. Temperantia. Courage. Fortitudo. Applying ancient philosophy to modern life, this is the Sunday Stoic. Welcome to the Sunday Stoic Podcast. This is Steve coming to you from Conway, Arkansas. Uh, I am a biology teacher, not a philosopher by training, but uh, I am a student of the philosophy of Stoicism, and for the last almost 200 episodes, I have been sharing what I've been learning um, and my own interpretation of what uh, the Stoics meant. Uh, Stoicism is a philosophy from... Um, about 300 BC is when it started, and it's it uh, has been kind of revived today. It's never completely gone away, but it, it went away as an official school um, during the uh, late Roman Empire as Christianity rose, um, and and it always has had fans. But now people are starting to study it and revive it and update it uh, for the modern era. So what we do on this show, for the most part, is uh, read old texts try to interpret them, see what's valid in them, maybe what's not valid in them for the modern era, and also uh, interview um, other thinkers of, uh, of uh, uh, the Stoic flavor, usually sometimes thinkers outside of the Stoic realm who have something to offer for uh, our own improvement. So uh, just to give you a heads up, I myself am beginning my semester. Uh, we're meeting in person for some of our classes here at the university where I teach. So it'll be interesting to see what happens because, uh, you know, COVID numbers are still fairly high here where I live in Arkansas. I want to thank my patrons uh, before we continue for supporting the show. Uh, they help to keep the website running, to keep hosting going so I can keep several years worth of episodes uh, free and available to everyone else. So they make that possible. If you want to support the show, go to www.patreon.com slash sundaystoic. You can always do a one-time donation on PayPal with the email address, address sundaystoic at gmail.com. This week, we're going to hear um, a reading from Epictetus. Uh, where he is going to talk about a couple of things, but the main themes here that we're going to hear about is um, we we need to focus on the training that's that fits our goals. So we're trying to improve ourselves. We have to think about what is it we actually want to be? Who do we want to be? How are we going to get there? And then get rid of the superfluous and focus on the things that really matter. And we have to make sure that the role models we follow the the uh, the examples we use are good ones for the outcomes that we wish to obtain, and we also need to remember that studying philosophy is not about talking about philosophy like I do on this podcast. Right? It's about living it. It's like going to the doctor. You often go in for surgery. You don't come out of surgery feeling great. You feel uh, kind of rough, right? And and it's because uh, improvement is often kind of uncomfortable. So that's where Epictetus, uh, who was, if you don't know, a Roman slave who was eventually freed and became one of the most influential Stoic teachers. That's what he has to say today. The Discourses of Epictetus, Book 3, Number 23, To Those Who Read and Discourse for Display. First say to yourself what manner of man you want to be. When you have settled this, Act upon it in all that you do, for in pretty much nearly all pursuits we see that done. Athletes first decide what they want to be, then they act accordingly. If a man is to be a long-distance runner, he takes the diet, the walking, the rubbing, the gymnastics suited to that, and if he is going in for the short course, he alters this to suit his aim. If for the panathlon, he alters his training still more. You will find the same done in the arts. If you are a carpenter, you will have this kind of work. If a smith, you will have that kind. For in everything we do, if we have no standard to go by, we shall do it ineffectively. If we use the wrong standard, we shall fail completely. Now we have two standards to go by, one general and one special. The first one is what we must act as human beings. What does this include? We must not act like a sheep at random, nor like a brute destructively. The special standard is relative to each man's occupation and purpose. The lyre player must act as a lyre player. 
the carpenter as a carpenter, the philosopher as a philosopher, the orator as an orator. When, therefore, you say, come and hear me lecturing to you, see to it first that you are not acting without aim. If, then, you find you have a standard, see to it that it is the right one. Do you wish to do men good, or to receive compliments? At once you have the answer. What account do I take of the praise of the multitude? An excellent answer. Nor does the musician heed the multitude so far as he is a true musician, nor the mathematician. Do you wish, then, to be good? What are you aiming at? Tell us, that we may, too, run to your lecture room. Now, can anyone do good to others unless he has received good himself? No, no more than the man who is no carpenter can help others in carpentry, nor he who is no shoemaker in shoemaking. The philosopher's school, gentlemen, is a physician's consulting room. You must leave it in pain, not in pleasure, for you come to it in disorder. One of you with a shoulder out, one of you with an ulcer, one of you with a headache. Would you have me sit here and tell you fine little thoughts and phrases so that you could praise me and then leave here still with your headache, with your ulcer, with your arm out of joint? Who are your idols? Who, as a child, did you look up to? Maybe who do you look up to now? Athletes, you know, basketball player, football player, uh, boxers, wrestlers, perhaps intellectuals, Albert Einstein. Perhaps uh, it's a musician that you look up to or, or looked up to as a, a younger person. But then look at the values of that person. Who are they? How do they live? Are they a good match for who you are, for who you would like to grow to be? Or were you just valuing their externals, their wealth, their power, their influence? Epictetus says that we need to figure out who we want to be and then what we need to do. It's that simple. What kind of person do we want to be? What do we want? And then what do we need to do to become that person? And we need to have a way to measure our progress or we need to have uh, you know, examples that are valid and not the wrong example. If we set up... Um, criteria for ourselves that are actually wrong, that don't quite fit, that are not aligned with who we want to be, we're going to grow in the wrong direction, or we're going to let things slide that we should have worked on. And so we need to make sure that our uh, our goals uh, are defined, that our, that our training is well defined, and that we measure our progress with the proper yardstick. We have the right uh, values, we have the right role models. And so it might be a good time to evaluate who you actually are and who you actually emulate and see if we, you need to adjust. Um, also, uh, he says, uh, just to warn everyone, that we're not here to learn to talk pretty. We're not here to learn how to speak philosophy, but to change and grow, and this is often uncomfortable. Um, he would talk... He talks... Uh, uh, in other places in the reading about Masonius Rufus being able to just make you squirm in your seat because even though he wasn't there when he saw you living your life in a unstoic way, it was almost like he knew. He could bring, uh, you know, when he's talking to a crowd, he felt like he was talking to you. He brought your sins to the surface, as it were, and it sounded like he knew exactly what you had done that didn't fit the stoic path and made you feel guilty about it. It was like going to a doctor and 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 uh, getting a shot it's uncomfortable it's unpleasant but it's for your own good to root out those problems that you have and to make them better so lots lots of things to think about in in that reading um i myself uh know that i i don't i think a lot of i don't know if it's just guys that have this problem like i think about the way my dad is he is Got a lot more energy than I. I don't. He's always been very on the go, and he was always yelling at me if I wasn't doing something. Like, get out there, get outside, go play, do this, do that. And I still feel guilty to this day when I'm 
having a lazy morning or something. It's like, oh, I can hear my dad's voice in the back of my head. Now, I love my father, but I, I know that I need to be my own person. And for me, contemplation is important. Um, reading a text, uh, thinking about it, uh, having a cup of coffee while listening to the birds sing and thinking about what I read. This is not something to be guilty of, so I need to realign who I am and what affects my uh, emotions. Like, I shouldn't feel guilty about about that. Now, that on the other hand, I should not allow myself uh, to become lazy, uh, which I probably am. But uh, I, I need to work on aligning my values, uh, uh, aligning my emotions to those values, and letting things that often have bothered me go and, 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 and realize that it's not logical to feel guilty about things that don't fit my actual values that I'm trying to align with. So align yourself with your purpose. Who do you want to be? Okay, now make a list. What would you have to do to become that person and start training for that? And use good examples and track your progress. And eventually we'll get close to the top of that mountain. Maybe, who knows, maybe you will be the first modern Stoic sage. Seize the day. Carpe diem. Thank you for listening to The Sunday Stoic. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, rate, and review The Sunday Stoic on iTunes. Become a member of The Sunday Stoic team, earn rewards, and be an integral part of the show by becoming a patron at www.patreon.com slash sundaystoic. Contact the show by emailing sundaystoic at gmail.com. To find out more, visit www.sundaystoicpodcast.com. And as Steve always says... Carpe diem.